Welcome back to a Factodo Weekly, your favorite roundup of strange science, accidental genius, and things you didn't know you were curious about. This week, bananas that defy gravity, coffee beans with superpowers, airbags that explode to save your life, a compass that always knows where you're going, even when you don't, and lightning, because the sky has anger issues. Stick around till the end for our crunchy bonus fact. Popcorn, because even snacks have science. Ready to stretch your brain? Let's go. Bananas, the fruit that smiles back at you. Seriously, have you ever noticed that bananas always look like they're happy to see you? But have you ever stopped to ask yourself why they're curved in the first place? It's not just so they can fit snugly in a lunchbox. Although that's a nice bonus. Nope. The reason bananas are curved has everything to do with how they grow and a little thing called negative geotropism. Try saying that five times fast. Here's the scoop. Bananas start their life growing downward. Just like any other fruit, gravity pulls them toward the ground. That's positive geotropism, by the way. But bananas are overachievers. They're like that one kid in class who just has to be different. Instead of continuing to grow towards the ground, bananas decide to bend upward, fighting gravity in search of sunlight. This phenomenon called negative geotropism happens because bananas are technically berries, no, really, and they grow on giant herbaceous plants, not trees. As the fruit develops, it hangs down from the plant, but then the cells on the bottom side of the fruit start growing faster than the cells on the top. That imbalance forces the fruit to bend upward, like it's reaching for the sun. It's basically the fruit's way of making sure it gets enough light for photosynthesis, even though the fruit itself doesn't do much photosynthesis. Bananas are weird like that, but why bother curving at all? Well, in the wild, curved bananas are easier for animals to spot, pick, and to eat, you know, which helps disperse the seeds. Although, let's be honest, modern bananas are seedless, so that's more of a historical footnote. Another fun fact, the banana you buy at the grocery store is usually a Cavendish, a cultivated variety that's cloned because, well, nature couldn't quite figure out how to make a tasty, seedless, disease-resistant banana. Spoiler alert, nature's still working on that last part. So next time you peel back that bright yellow skin, remember you're holding a fruit that literally defies gravity, a snack that's been engineered by nature and a bit by humans, to look like it's always in a good mood. And hey, if bananas can bend over backwards to get sunlight, maybe we can take a page from their book and reach for our own sources of light. Uh, just don't try growing upwards unless you're a banana. Ah, lightning. Nature's very own rock concert, complete with blinding lights, ground-shaking rumbles, and the occasional charred tree. But why does it happen, and why does it always seem to pick the worst possible moment to strike like right when you're outside with an umbrella? Let's start at the beginning. Thunderstorms. These big puffy clouds don't just look dramatic, they're actually factories for electrical chaos. Inside a thundercloud, tiny ice crystals and water droplets swirl around, colliding like a bumper car party gone wrong. These collisions cause a buildup of static electricity, just like when you shuffle across the carpet in socks and zap your unsuspecting cat. Only this time, we're talking about millions of volts, way beyond your average household zap. The top of the cloud becomes positively charged and the bottom becomes negatively charged. Meanwhile, the ground below the cloud gets a positive charge induced by the cloud's negative charge above. Basically, Earth's surface is like Hey, I'll match your vibe. Now comes the dramatic part, the discharge. When the difference in charge between the cloud and the ground gets too intense to handle, the electricity makes a break for it. Boom! Lightning. 
lightning actually starts with a faint, invisible path of ionized air called a stepped leader, a sort of electrical feeler reaching down from the cloud. As it gets closer to the ground, an upward streamer of positive charge leaps up to meet it. When they connect, bam, instant supercharged light show. And that's just cloud to ground lightning. Lightning can also happen within clouds, between clouds, or even from the top of the cloud into space. Nature's not picky. It'll zap whatever needs zapping. Oh, and here's the kicker. The air around a lightning bolt heats up to around 30,000 degrees Celsius. That's five times hotter than the surface of the sun. That's why you get that ear-splitting thunderclap. It's the sound of air expanding explosively. So next time you're watching a storm roll in, remember it's not just Mother Nature throwing a tantrum, it's a mind-blowing high-voltage science show. And if you ever feel like lightning's following you, don't worry. Statistically speaking, you're more likely to get hit by a meteorite while being eaten by a shark on your birthday. But hey, always carry an umbrella, just, you know, maybe not a metal one. It's time to stretch that brain of yours. Number one, lightning question. What's hotter, a lightning bolt or the surface of the sun? A, the sun. B, lightning. C, a microwaved hot pocket. D, Chuck Norris. Number two, banana question. Why do bananas grow curved? A, they're reaching for sunlight. B, they want to look aesthetic on Instagram. C, gravity is pulling their peel the wrong way. D, they're trying to escape the bunch. Answers coming up right after the next segment. So stay tuned. Airbags, the unsung heroes of car safety. Ever wonder how they manage to inflate in the blink of an eye faster than you can say crash test dummy? Let's take a closer look at the science that saves lives every day. Inside your car, airbags are hidden in plain sight, nestled within the steering wheel, dashboard, or even the side panels. They sit there quietly waiting for the moment they're needed, but when that moment comes, they spring into action faster than your reflexes can even react. And it's all thanks to a tiny but mighty chemical reaction. Inside each airbag module is a device called an inflator. When a collision occurs, sensors in the car instantly detect the rapid deceleration and send an electrical signal to the inflator. Here's where the magic happens. The inflator ignites a small explosive charge, typically involving a compound like sodium azide. When it's triggered, this compound rapidly breaks down and releases a large volume of nitrogen gas in a fraction of a second. Picture this, a mini controlled explosion that creates a sudden massive puff of gas. That gas fills the folded airbag so quickly, around 30 to 50 milliseconds, that it's fully deployed before you even realize what's happening. And just like that, you've got a life-saving cushion between you and the steering wheel. Modern airbags are even smarter. Some systems can measure factors like the speed of the crash, the position of the passenger, and even whether or not someone's wearing a seatbelt. These systems can adjust the force and speed of inflation to give you the safest possible protection. It's like having a personal bodyguard built into your car, always on standby ready to protect you. And here's a fascinating fact. Airbags are designed to deflate just as quickly as they inflate. Uh, the tiny vent holes allow the gas to escape as soon as the initial impact is absorbed. That's why you're not left staring at a giant balloon blocking your view. It's a one-time split-second deployment that does its job and gets out of the way. Airbags first became available in cars in the 1970s, but it wasn't until the 1990s that they became standard. 
in most vehicles. Since then, they've saved countless lives and continue to evolve with new technology, including side, side airbags, curtain airbags, and even pedestrian airbags in some advanced models. It's amazing to think that such a small device can pack so much life-saving power, its chemistry, physics, and engineering all working together in perfect harmony. The next time you slide behind the wheel, remember that airbag is a tiny superhero waiting to leap into action, you know, faster than you can blink and always ready to help you walk away from the unthinkable. Lightning versus the sun. The correct answer is B, lightning. Yes, a lightning bolt can reach temperatures of up to 30,000 degrees Celsius. That's about five times hotter than the surface of the sun. So next time you're caught in a storm, remember nature's literally throwing mini fireballs. Curvy bananas. Answer A, they're reaching for sunlight. Bananas grow upward, bending toward the sun in a process called negative geotropism. In other words, they're the overachievers of the fruit world, always reaching for the top, even if it means looking a little weird doing it. That's it. Your brain has officially stretched. Ever get lost and think, if only I had a compass like those explorers in the movies? Well, buckle up, because today we're diving into how this tiny device can point you it in the right direction, literally, thanks to a little thing called Earth's magnetic field. So how does a compass actually work? Let's start with the basics. A compass is basically a tiny magnet that's free to rotate, that's it. Inside your trusty compass is a little needle that acts like a miniature superhero, always pointing north, but not because it's trying to ruin your hiking trip. It's because of Earth's magnetic field. Our planet is like a giant bar magnet with a north and south pole, though it's a bit wonky since the magnetic poles aren't perfectly aligned with the geographic poles. Still, that invisible force field wraps around the Earth and influences everything magnetic, including your compass needle. When you hold a compass, the magnetic needle aligns itself with Earth's magnetic field, and voila, it points roughly toward the magnetic north. That's your guide. Just remember magnetic north and true north, the North Pole, aren't exactly the same. They're about 500 kilometers apart. Um, but that's a topic for another time. Pretty clever, right? And to think ancient mariners used this simple device to navigate the oceans long before GPS or Google Maps. Picture a bunch of sailors with compasses shouting, land ho, instead of, Hey Siri, where's the nearest coffee shop? Now that's old school. And speaking of old school, did you know the ancient Chinese were using lodestone compasses as early as the 11th century? That's right. They figured out that a naturally magnetized rock could help them find their way long before fancy gadgets hit the market. Modern compasses come in all shapes and sizes from tiny keychain versions to sophisticated electronic devices with built-in GPS, but at their core, they all rely on the same simple principle, magnetism. It's the universal force that's been guiding us for centuries. So the next time you're lost in the woods or just looking for your car in a parking lot, remember your compass is guided by Earth's magnetic field, a natural force that's been pointing the way for centuries. Just don't try to use it to find your TV remote. Ah, coffee, humanity's most reliable jumpstart button since, well, since we discovered mornings are the worst. But did you know that this magical brew hides a secret power that goes beyond just helping you survive Monday meetings? Let's dive into the world of coffee beans. Those little brown nuggets that turn adults from grumpy zombies into semi-functional humans. The secret ingredient is caffeine, nature's very own alarm clock. When you sip that morning cup, caffeine waltzes into your bloodstream and makes its way to your brain where it pulls a classic double cross. 
You see, your brain has this chemical called adenosine. It's like the you're getting sleepy sign that builds up throughout the day. Caffeine swoops in and blocks adenosine from doing its job. Bam. Sleepiness. Not today, my friend. You're now running on caffeine power. But wait, there's more. Caffeine doesn't just kick adenosine to the curb. It also revs up your central nervous system. That's why you feel more alert, focused, and ready to tackle that to-do list you've been ignoring for a week. It's like upgrading your brain from a flip phone to a smartphone. Who needs sleep when you have science on your side? But hold on, too much caffeine and you might find yourself jittery, anxious, and babbling like a squirrel on an espresso bender. Moderation is key, people. Think of caffeine as a superpower. Great responsibility, remember? And here's a fun fact. Coffee wasn't originally just for drinking. In some ancient cultures, coffee berries were mixed with animal fat and eaten as an energy snack. Think of it as the world's first energy bar. No fancy packaging required. Bet your protein shake can't beat that. Coffee's journey from bean to brew is a tale of human ingenuity and a little bit of luck. From the ancient forests of Ethiopia, where legend says a goat herder first noticed his goats bouncing around after eating coffee berries, to the modern coffee shops where we line up for our daily fix, coffee has shaped history, trade, and entire economies. That's a lot of power for a humble bean. So the next time you sip your coffee, remember that this little bean has been fueling humanity's productivity and awkward small talk for centuries. It's the secret superpower of grown-ups everywhere. Popcorn, the snack that turns movie nights into crunchy, buttery experiences. But have you ever wondered why those little kernels explode into fluffy puffs of deliciousness? Well, buckle up, because today we're diving deep into the science behind popcorn's explosive personality. Every popcorn kernel starts with a tough outer shell called the pericarp. It's like a natural pressure cooker. Inside that shell hides a small amount of water trapped within the starchy center. When you heat the kernel, whether in a microwave, on a stovetop, or over an open flame, the water inside transforms into steam. As the temperature climbs, so does the pressure, building up like a mini bomb. At around 180 degrees Celsius, 356 degrees Fahrenheit, the pressure inside the kernel reaches a critical point, a typhoon, and bam! The pericarp can't hold it anymore. It bursts open, releasing the trapped steam. The starch inside instantly expands and flips the kernel inside out, creating that irresistible, fluffy treat. Nature's own popcorn cannon, minus the noise complaints, but not all popcorn pops the same way. Some kernels explode into butterfly shapes, those jagged crispy edges you love for buttery toppings, while others form mushroom shapes, perfect for caramel coatings. It's like popcorn has a personality quiz built in, and here's something wild. Popcorn is one of the oldest snacks in human history. Archaeologists have found evidence of popcorn dating back over 5,000 years. Imagine that ancient civilizations popping corn over open fires long before movie theaters even existed. Talk about time, timeless snack science. Oh, and did you know that some kernels just refuse to pop? Those stubborn ones are called old maids. They either have too little water inside or a cracked shell that lets steam escape before the magic happens. So the next time you're enjoying a bowl of popcorn, remember each kernel is a tiny time bomb of deliciousness, patiently waiting for the perfect moment to explode into snack heaven. Pop responsibly and maybe share with a friend.